welcome back to Maggie's Cottage. I hope you've been enjoying some of our videos. We love to do renovations on the cottage and we love the videos that we've shared and hope that you've enjoyed them and some of our DIY projects, decorating ideas, just some fun things. Please like and subscribe to our channel and please leave your comments. We love to hear from you. So I'm so excited about this video. At Maggie's Cottage, there isn't a fireplace. At one time there was, but it's an old home, 145 years old, and it was taken out at some point. So we've been trying to figure out how to make a fireplace for Maggie's Cottage. If you've watched some of our other videos, you know we've made some faux fireplace mantles. Well, we're excited to show you what we came up with for Maggie's Cottage, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. So this is what we started with. We had this beautiful vintage oak armoire that we had in our bedroom that we no longer needed. I had thought about selling it, but I really didn't want to. It's beautiful. The details are amazing. It's beautiful oak. So after looking at it for a while, we both kind of thought that that might make a beautiful fireplace for Maggie's cottage. So we measured the opening of the door and Brian did some research and he was able to find a fireplace insert, an electric fireplace insert from Dimplex Electric Fireplace that would fit perfectly in the door. So we're not gonna use the whole thing. The bottom part with the drawers we don't need. We would just be using the top part. But the first thing was that we needed to get it the size we needed it. It was kind of a wide armoire. And we only needed about a 12 inch depth. So Brian took it outside took it apart and started using his saw to cut it almost in half. It was a little scary wondering if this was really going to work. They started on one side, sawed it, and then we would turn it to the next side and saw that side. That side went well, so here we are turning it over. He's doing, I believe this is the bottom part. It went quite well. And this is beautiful oak wood. Yeah, this gave me an opportunity to use my brand new DeWalt circular saw that I just got uh, prior to this project. And you see I've got that uh, Krieg, I think they call it a Krieg uh, guide on there. That way I was able to uh, make the cut straight uh, all along the, the sides and the back of this thing, which, which was important because I certainly did not want it to be a wavering line. I wanted it to be a straight line, which would make it a lot easier for it to fit up against the wall once we got it done. I believe this is the last side that he needed to cut. And I know right now most of you are tempted to say, go pack, go, because you see my Green Bay Packer sweats on there, so feel free. <laughs> <laughs> it went pretty smooth. I have to admit, I was nervous about cutting this apart, but Brian did a good job. Well, I got lucky, and, you know, I felt like, well, we're either going to sell it or we can use it for something, and I thought if we can pull this off, into a fireplace, I had a feeling it was gonna look pretty doggone good when we got done with it. And there it is. You see we have that back piece that we are not gonna use. Well, actually we ended up using a few of those pieces of boards out of it, but I was excited about having that piece that I'm probably going to make some shelves out of. It turned out really nice. Yeah, that back piece had some nice pieces of wood on there, so some of it's going to be used for a future project, and like Laura said, some of it is, is actually being used for this project to help fill in the front end to, um, to go around the, the surround once we get it in there. But yeah, you know, the first phase of this thing went pretty smooth and um, felt pretty good about um, getting it cut without any issues. We're saving all the beautiful details going to be really nice yeah so then the top part which was separate that needed to be cut and that was a little more tricky but um, I was able to cut some of it with the circular saw and then I had to use my chop saw to, to finish that off but um, but anyway I was able to at least get it cut into into the proper size as you can see there 
fitting up on the top. So now it's all cut to 12 inches. That's the depth that we went with, which provides sufficient um, space for the insert and uh, airflow for the insert in the back as well. Then it was time to figure out what we were going to put on the top for the mantelpiece. We found this nice piece of pine at Lowe's. It was 16 inch width and we decided that that was going to look really nice on the top. There wasn't anything there to begin with so we needed something sturdy so I could put lots of decor on it. So I started by laying it on top of it to see how we wanted how much we wanted it to be overlapping on each edge. So you can see that we're going to need to, or Brian is going to need to cut it. So he got out his chop saw or his compound miter saw is what he told me it's actually called. And he's going to cut off some of the end of this piece of lumber. It was nice that we didn't have to buy very much. We only bought this piece of wood, the rest of the wood we used from the fireplace or from the homoir. So then he needed to sand it off where he had cut it, make it nice and smooth. He also had to go and cut a little bit off because the armoire wasn't quite square where we realized when we got it cut. So he's gonna cut just a little bit off the back of this piece of wood also. And that went fairly smooth. Thank goodness he's good at cutting these things for me. There it is. Just have a little overlap, about an inch on the sides, inch and a half to two inches on the front to make a nice mantle. Then it was time to attach it, so he got some wood glue. Used lots of nice wood glue on there. Then he used some brad nails also to make it more secure so that it would be sturdy and stay in place. I'm getting excited looking at this. It was going to be a really nice top for this faux fireplace. Then we got a delivery that we were so excited about. Yeah, so I, you know, I did some research when we decided we wanted to do this project to make sure I could find an insert that would work. Not only just an insert that would work, but one that actually looked good. And so I got onto YouTube and did some research and uh, found Dimplex, which is a company out of Canada. And wow, their technology for electronic fireplace inserts is pretty doggone amazing. I mean, the flame is pretty realistic. So I put an order in. This is the 25-inch Multifire XD firebox. Uh, I'll put a link for it down in the description, so if anybody's interested, they can get it. It was about $320, uh, which I thought, hey, I'm willing to pay that for something that will not only heat a room if I need it to, but also look good. So there wasn't a whole lot to have to do once I got it out of the box. There is the front uh, glass plate that went with it and the unit itself. So, you know, plugged it in and, and started. Look at how beautiful that is. And I mean, that's just right out of the box. There's several different settings that you can do with this as well. There's a remote control uh, to set it with, you know, for different types of flames to make it look like a gas flame or whatever. Uh, you can either have the heat, you know, blow out or not and it's set on a thermostat. It'll heat up a thousand square foot room. So I thought, heck yeah. So anyway, very, very pleased with this uh, Dimplex insert. So, you know, once I got the insert, I, I wanted to set it in there. And of course, now we need to figure out how do we fill up the space, right, that we've created. And so I created this little box for it to set on so that it would lift it off the ground a little bit. And, um, you know, because I didn't want the insert to be right on the ground. I wanted it to be above it a little bit. So. Based on how much space we needed, this is what I did. And it sets on there really nice. And look at how that glass, it just fit perfectly on both sides of that. It was almost like it was made for it. So, I mean, this project couldn't have gone any better uh, so far, especially with the insert that I had no control over. At this point, I was getting even more excited once seeing that in there. And then it was time to add some trim to fill in the areas. Brian put a little piece of wood up at the top and then we found this tin from OfferUp for $20, this vintage tin that I wanted to add to it also. I was so excited about this. 
but we needed to figure out how to attach it. So Brian got some pieces of wood that were from the other part of the armor that we cut off. We used a lot of that in this area. So he stapled on these pieces of wood on the edge so he'd have something to attach the tin to. And there it is going in. Added some little brad nails into that to attach it to it. It's going to look amazing. So you can see we still have just one little spot where it needs some wood just below the tin. And he's going to use some more wood from the armoire. Some of this nice oak. So got one of these pieces pulled off of the back. He's cutting it with his chop saw the right size and then had to make it more narrow also. And here it is attached. She stapled it in. It's coming together. He added a little bit of trim around the tin just to make it look more finished. And I really like the way that that looks. Then he also added a little more trim up at the top and then along the sides of the wood that he added in. Now it was time to figure out what we're gonna do with the top of the mantle, and I decided I wanted to stain it. So I used one of my favorite stains, dark walnut, went over it with that about three times to get it dark enough, and then I wanted to add some polycrylic so it would hold up, so I could put a lot of decor on it without worrying about it getting scuffed up. I love the way that it turned out. And just wanted to show you a little view from the back of the fireplace. It's going to be open, but this will be against the wall. You can see the insert. And here it is, ready to paint. My favorite part, getting it done. So I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum Chalk Chiffon Cream Paint, and I'm going to go over it with some wax, some clear wax, and some dark wax. And here you can see I started painting. It's looking good. And here it is, the whole thing is covered with paint. It's starting to look a lot more cohesive. But I needed to do something with this tin. I wanted it to still look old and vintage, so I took some acrylic silver metallic paint and just put it on with a little stencil brush so that it wouldn't cover it completely. And it looks amazing. I love the way that this turned out. The details are so beautiful. Look at that tin, still looks old, but just that silver brightens it up a little bit. The fireplace in it looks so amazing. I love the way that this turned out and the details that were on this armoire just make this into a beautiful fireplace. The top turned out really nice. I added some decor to it. This is going to go up to Maggie's cottage. Right now it's at our home in Arizona but we will haul it up there when we head up north on vacation and it looks beautiful. I love the way that it turned out. I hope that you enjoyed this video and got some ideas for something that you can do to make a faux electric fireplace for your home. Please watch our other videos and like our channel and subscribe to it and leave your comments. We appreciate your support. Thank you.